Welcome to the Tuck Cast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuck CG Fly Shop and Guide Service. Tuck CG Fly Shop and Guide Service has three convenient locations to serve you. 3 Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina. 530 West Main Street, Silva, North Carolina. And our newest store located at 110 Depot Street, Waynesville, North Carolina. Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service is your number one stop prior in after your epic fly fishing adventure in Western North Carolina. Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service proudly carries industry leading brands such as Sims, Orvis, Corkers, Sage, Rio, Scientific Anglers, Hatch, Nautilus, Lampson, Fish Pond, Scott Fly Rods, Echo, Umpqua, Hairline, Nature Spirit, Peak, Norweiss, plus a large selection of flies and streamers. Check out www.tuckflyshop.com for stream flow information. Book a lesson or guided trip, or even shop for your favorite Tuckasegee Fly Shop gear. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop. Here in our silver shop today, we have Bobby, the Bearded Wonder Minute, Coach Dell Diesel Collins, and I'm your host, Shannon, big mess, messer. Chickity, check, check. Woo, I pulled it off, baby. And I got to remember how to do this. Man, that sounded good for not being a recording. Well, he muted me, so I couldn't make any fur. I know what right. Oh, here it is. A little bit of fur, fur. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, didn't have time to do that. but. Uh, <laughs> woo. That's good. I, I didn't did update it. anything either, so I couldn't uh, flash anything on the screen because oh, I had nothing about Waynesville. Perfect. Perfect. But people know about it. Well, hey, and that's the thing, man. People know about it. Real quick before we, we dive into some things here, we've got a special guest with us today, Santiago Guzzetti. 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 Uh, is, is in the house today. <laughs> so uh, we're excited to have you on. We're going to talk more uh, with Santi here shortly. But first things first, we got to have a splash of bourbon today. So... I have uh, the remnants. <laughs> the uh, remnants. Uh, this is filibuster. It's a special bottle to me. Yep. Um, my friend and I, uh, Matt White, up in Northern Virginia from a fishing trip back in February, uh, really enjoyed this. Uh, this so this is a Northern Virginia um, <laughs> whiskey because it's not Kentucky. It's not bourbon, right? But um, this one's this was pretty cool. It's actually blended with some. Uh, it's finished off in wine barrels. Oh, cool. So it's got a real Real nice finish to it. Um, French oak barrels with uh, that were used for wine. So what we're going to do today, we're going to make a Montana mule. Our guess is Kentucky mule or I don't know. What is it, Bobby? Montana mule. Okay, there we go. He's the expert. So um, so here we go. Let's do this. A little bit. Of, and, you know, this is a great summer drink. You know, we were talking earlier in the year, like, man, I'm, I'm really getting on tequila because it's really good for summer. But, you know, Mario's in there. Hmm. Ice, does ice ever get stuck? Yeah. Yes. All right. So, a little bit of bourbon here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. Do it. Uh, <laughs> it's the real deal. All that's right. Some fake recording. Yeah, and that's not even a real cork thing, but it's nice. It's those uh, rubber corks. There it is. There it is. I help you out there a little bit. All right. So, <laughs> put a little, a little bit away from the microphone with that one. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh. oh. Now, which beer is that? This is ginger beer. Okay, but which um, brand? Um, it's out of Brooklyn, New York. I see that on it. Spectacular. So, three ninety eight at Ingles. So back to Chris Hart. Okay. All I know is that's a when, lot when of he bourbon. was talking about the beer. <laughs> when when he was talking about the beer, when we was in Wild Bills out there the mm -hmm. other day, you know they have their, um, you know the, it's like a Huckleberry one. Yeah. Yeah, and it, lot, lot and it was the beer there. that there go, the, the beer that they Ooh, used like was the one that Chris named out. Did there. you see how much Good. bourbon he put in that yeah, thing? Normally, normally you don't fill the ha the glass half full with bourbon. Two fingers. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, now can we talk? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, now we can talk. All right, oh. nice. that's awesome. Um, uh oh, somebody's ringing. It's not oh, me this time. That's me. I, I'm, I'm on Do Not Where's Disturb. My other? Where's my other? There it is. I got I right can there. make me one. Right there in front of you. Oh. Okay. Adele just. I didn't see no glass for you, Shannon. I'm good. 
Bobby? I'm no, good. good. I'm There's willing, Bobby's. I'm, I'm willing good. to share with the right person. I'm just <laughs> I'm holding down top of the Well, well what, do you think? what do you think there? Is it too much bourbon? Did I pour no. Some? Okay. The, no. the ginger beer really kind of yeah, no, no. evens it everything out. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's um, perfectly balanced. <laughs> perfectly <laughs> balanced. You hear that? Let finish it. You hear so that? Let, me, let me see the bottle. Yep. Absolutely. Talk about it a little bit. The bottle? Sure. Well, obviously, <laughs> obviously, you see the Capitol building in the background. <laughs> and uh, who knows what these two fellas are uh, discussing out there on the front steps, but I'm sure it's not good for us. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Interesting, right there. I just wanted to get a get a whiff of the, uh, yeah, the finish, yep. uh, aromas. Mm. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm not really picking up any of the notes from the. Mm. Smells like bourbon. It, it does. Um, oh man! Well, no, is, I mean, but there's so some good, that you need to get your boy yeah, in. A little. But it's the same conversation. That it smells like wine. Of course, it smells like wine. It's fucking wine. But <laughs> 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 from there, okay, it's aggressive in the nose. There is the, some oh, sort of oak or not. It's H on oak, so you should be able to get it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I was like, I mean, it, I, was like, I was like, are you smelling it, Bobby? Well, like, are I mean, you good? Can you smell, Bobby? Well, I mean, you, I don't you, smell anything. Well, you <laughs> talked about it being finished off in the wine barrel. Yeah, yeah. And I was curious if you picked up some of that. Did you could smell the wine. Exactly. I'm still learning how to taste some of this, like official fancy bourbon stuff. Like, and then it, and I've learned a lot about wines. Um, oh, we got a bottle of wine. Too? We do. So we'll um, we'll talk about this in a second. But you know, learning wines, like I can sniff a wine and I have no clue what I'm smelling besides. Rotten grapes. <laughs> well, <laughs> in certain point, you're totally right. Yeah. I mean, there are grapes that have been fermented, right, fermented and then yeah. they're, they're all at that age has for yeah. a certain amount of time, and then they're like maybe double fermented in the bottle. That's depending on the producer. But each wine has certain characteristics that depending where the terroir or where the vine has uh, been grown, yeah. mm -hmm. how you ferment it, who is the producer. What type of fermentation is being used? Uh, it's like it's so extensive that we wow. can go through this for days and days. So, and days. so how long did it take you to learn about wines? Like what you're tasting and smelling? Yeah, I mean, growing up in Argentina. Okay. So that, check that question off. <laughs> Where'd you grow up? Argentina. Argentina. There we go. Sat down yonder in the holler. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of south, south, so south, south, kind of south, 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 way south. Yeah. On the other side uh, of the tracks. Yeah. So there is like certain point, like with the. Mm, uh, wine for the table is on every family. Okay. So like, you become a drunk pretty, pretty young in your life. Okay. Let me put it that way. <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, I met my wife. She was uh, like getting into the sommelier uh, life. And it's like, oh, I can cook. How about if I cook for everybody and you and your sommelier friends show up with wine and we all hang out? And sounds like Because the culture is very social. Correct. Right? Correct. Correct. So that as many people can you get in a table, more wines will be in that table. You uh, can compare okay. one to the other one and get no, it's not, this is too aggressive. Maybe that's the reason I've never been able to tell the difference is because it's like you drink one and then it's six days later before you taste another one. So you don't have a comparison. R right. Yeah. That, that in, in certain point is, is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Also, I know certain people who would love to have a, each time they open a bottle, finish that bottle and say, I... Um, uh, in order to get it, all those notes. I'm more of the person if I had three, four different wines in the same moment, I will I'll be able to compare. Yeah, interesting. That's my personal opinion. Well, I mean that makes sense. I I get criticized at home. I've got six bottles of bourbon. Well, now five. <coughs> they all have about that much left in them, and it's from where it's been social. We've drank you know, from there down to there. And it's like, okay, time to shut it down. <laughs> and then we put it up. And now I've got five bottles with that much left. So that's how, that's how we yeah. polished off this bottle of filibuster. So, um, but that, that makes total sense. Yeah, that's, that's neat. And, and so I end up being able to pick apart some of those things. But then I'm like, ah, this is too many consecutive nights in a row of Montana mules or, or you know, <laughs> glasses of neat bourbon so you can because i feel like you need it neat but then i learned from bobby and and fred and bob and gene that you need to open it up a little bit with some ice so yep. that yep. was that was interesting drops of water you can put yeah. some drops of water in bourbon and it'll 
open the door. My dad always told me that you put sweet tea in it to get rid of the hangover for the next day. <laughs> <laughs> sweet tea. That's what that's what he told me. Tea. Mix mix a bourbon with tea. Interesting. And you know they don't have hangover. Interesting. I don't know. So um Well I'm well, drinking water. Bobby's having Bobby's having water. Water. I had sweet tea on the podcast with Marvin last night. I had been out working on the boat trailer. Boys, hey. Them guys, they sweated yesterday working on them boats. It was hot. It was 88 degrees at the Uptown Webster weather, sta- weather Station, and uh, it was hot. Well, they're young. They are. They can do good that. To sweat. It's good to sweat. But So there was no there was no beer drinking or uh, bourbon for the uh, fishing report with Marvin as it was sweet tea time. Sweet tea. So, um, so what else we got to talk about? You just got back from a trip. Yeah, we've all been off for a little bit. I had family in yeah, town. Yeah, I'm like, where are we at? How are we do? Dell was off. <laughs> yeah, it's Shannon been in. Yeah, we've all kind of had all different things going on. So I went. All right, I'll start. So you went first. I'll start. I went to Orlando. It was hot. <laughs> we went to the beach. We went to the springs. It was fun. You went to NASA. We did. Yeah, the NASA. Never thing. been to you NASA. I bought a sun pass. Too. You were pretty stoked about NASA. NASA. I mean, if I could have been Bryson's age going there, you know, that's about like, when I went. I was probably his age. Bryson don't Terrible. realize. Just like me and Madeline, how lucky they are, you know. Yeah. And I, I try to remind them of that. Um, it was really cool. We were—I don't know if I got to tell you about this. We were looking at an exhibit. You know the moon rovers they drove around on the moon with. You know, I—you don't see much video of that happening, but it did. I'm looking at a moon so rover. They say that's right. It could have been <laughs> it's Universal Studios right up the street. Yeah. So <laughs> conspiracies. <laughs> so they um. They dag on this dude is talking with this other couple. He's a little older, you know, and Stacy and the kids kind of move. They're just like, this is Apollo. It's old stuff. We're moving quickly. And I'm like, man, this is some cool stuff here. You know, this is like the beginning. Well, I hear this guy talking and he's like, and so when I designed this part, Ooh. this dude helped design the moon rover and he's taking a tour just like we are. And we did have to pay, which Bobby pointed out. It's like, that stuff should be free. Yeah, we already paid for it. <laughs> Our tax dollars paid for every bit of it. Like I, I bought a T-shirt. It was, you know, twenty four ninety nine. I mean, you know, it all should have been free. But but the, the exhibits were great. They start you out. They really move you through the exhibits in the timeline order of how NASA's happens. Yeah. And that was really cool to experience. Um, definitely, if you're in that area, we ended up Cocoa Beach on the first day. We were like, ha! Ah! Didn't realize NASA's right there. So let's, next day we went back. So so we, so we get the sun pass. We're paying tolls like crazy. I mean, you drive from Orlando to Coco, you paying about twenty bucks in tolls. So instead of stopping at every one of these tolls and paying cash, we just get the sun pass and we're just. Whoa, How freezing. much is a sun pass? Fourteen ninety nine. Oh, dude, it's a. We got the sun pass pro, and it works on the entire East Coast, pretty much. Oh, so like uh, Bay Bridge Tunnel. We're good. What about Georgia? We're good. Like the Peach hey, Pass. Peach Pass, dude. I'm in that left lane. Peach Pass. Express. Mm-hmm. Buddy, 88 out the gate. So is it on your windshield? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Used, yeah all right. <laughs> now, 88 <laughs> out the gate, yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude, if people were sitting in that right eight lanes, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. Man, it was it was Scott. I don't know if you got one, but you might want to look into that. Uh. <laughs> Our buddy Scott Johnson down there. <laughs> that Peach Pass, man. I loved it. So, yeah. Um, But yeah, it works in all the states. Okay. So from Florida... South Carolina or not South Carolina don't do that. Um, they don't believe in roads. I don't know. Um, but Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, and then wh- whoever does Easy Pass or exp- you know whatever. So um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. But great trip. I've I've talked too much. So, All right. Yeah. Who's up? Then Bobby's was venture was the next. Uh, I mean, you my, had like my family. My brother in law was here with his nephew, yeah. so yeah. we just he went skinny dipping in West Fork of the Pigeon. Yeah, hey, baby. Yeah, yeah. Did a little swimming in the creek. Yeah, with the youngins because mm-hmm. they've never done it. So they they were too chicken to get under the water because it was like oh, really fifty six degrees. It was cold, dude. Yeah. Felt good, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, cold. Said, yeah, he, oh, yeah. he said when them blue wing olives started hatching around. <laughs> yeah, the blue wing olives were hatching. That's how cold the water was. If the blue wing olives are hatching near you and you're swimming in water, it might be too cold. But once I got under, I was good. I, yeah. I hovered I, out there for a while. That sounds better. I went to Cani Fork yesterday afternoon. You can peel like chicken in that water. <laughs> It was so hot. Yeah. It was so oh, that's hot. pretty good. Well, West Fork of the Pigeon was cold, old. 
Yeah. It was that cold. Was that was good. last week. I assume it still is cold. So That's pretty good. But, yeah, we didn't do too much. Just kind of milled around. So Yeah. You're the one that had the big adventure, man. You went to a rodeo. I didn't go to the rodeo. They went to the rodeo. You didn't go to the rodeo? I didn't go to the rodeo. They went. You got tagged in the picture. Uh, I get tagged in everything, man. Me too. <laughs> man, that was like the highlight of the trip, the rodeo. Oh, man. That was other stuff was the highlight of the trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And well, then in two weeks, you go back out. Yeah. Right, You're so out there. Where'd, right, you, where'd like, you go, man? So uh, we did a quick trip to West Yellowstone, Montana to visit Alex and Madeline. Um, and this trip was organized by my wife. Uh, her and Braden had never been out there before. So for them, it was a really neat adventure um, tied into a short amount of, of time frame. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we flew out um, and uh, met them in Bozeman. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. went, to, of course, eat at Sidewinders. Um, yeah, yeah. Shannon's like favorite place. So, so we're, every we're time gonna, we're going to so have every to get t- Sidewinders up for some so, promotional stuff. On so here. every time I go out, I eat something different. And it's and they of course they do the ten percent military discount uh, out there stuff so you know good good place to go support good food too, and it's fairly quick man I mean dude it's it's on, but it uh, driving down one ninety one or riding down one ninety one, man we had a hailstorm, oh a hailstorm oh did you dude like the road was white hailstorm oh yeah and the yeah. temperature dropped thirty some degrees, wow yeah um so I got out there of course I had the Earl Brinkley disease, okay which means it so rained you brought rain I brought rain. And uh, brought rain to the area, but it was a good trip. Uh, seen a lot of stuff in the park that I hadn't seen before, so we did a lot of exploring that way. Did a little fishing with the guys, you know, try to get them up on uh, fishing out there for the first time. And they both they both hooked fish, couldn't seal the deal. They got broke off, but yeah. uh, uh, Braden did catch frog. There you go. <laughs> he caught a frog in the, nuts, man. down in uh, Slough Creek. <laughs> That's good, man. <laughs> seen the buffalo fighting. You know, they're 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 they're, they're not dude. fighting, Shannon. Yeah, no, hey, dude, they're That's, fighting. Hey, they're head button or something. That's no, what no, we no. Tell Bryce no, 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 no. Those no. were two males. No, no, <laughs> these were males, dude. He <laughs> come, a, he come a running, man. He was. That's he was what we tell the children. They're just fighting. Oh kids. no, I told, I told. I told. They're wrestling. I told Brayden. <laughs> they're, hey. they're wrestling. Well, yeah, why is they he on his right. back, Dad? Yeah, uh, yeah uh, you know that's just like what you, they do when they wrestle. It's a takedown. It was a takedown. You know, it was actually a good time. The weather, weather was good. It was cool. Yeah. I tell the people who are actually going to be heading out there with us here pretty soon. Honestly, I think the conditions are going to be spot on. The water's a little bit lower than what we're in some hoot owl right now. They're right? in hoot owl, but I got to tell you, man, the water's cold. Yeah, it's like what Bobby said. The water's cold. Yeah, it it, it is, um, and it looks Chile. like I think it's going to be. We're going to hit it just right. I I really think we do. Um, Have you ever been to Yellowstone? Mm, I'm not. No. Oh no. man, that's on your bucket list for fishing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I went to the. I, I mean, you grew up in Argentina, <laughs> but still. Yeah, you know. different water. Yeah, totally different water. Yeah, like in, I grew up in Argentina. I live on like mid Argentina, Cordoba, and then I moved to Patagonia for a while. But again, I have nowhere to compare with anything that right. I've been experiencing in the U.S. so yeah. far. Yeah, yeah. They uh, say that 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 Southwest or any of a lot of Montana is yeah. like the similarities between Patagonia there really? striking. Yeah. The, I, uh, I wouldn't know. I've not been yet. But they're talking about like the terrain, the topography, the type well, and even, of yeah, the, uh, uh, vegetation, things like yeah, that. I mean, it's maybe? like there's a, there's a hopper season, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think I think that's elevation, high mountain desert kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, dry, windy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like that's there, it. Is, there is days that you can even. Do they get have a bunch the of forest fires down there? There is. There is. There is. There okay. Is. There is. From just like lightning strikes and stuff. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So it is and, it's and, extremely and, similar. Yeah, it's yeah. impossible to come like but that to control happens it because in like, of the, the wind. Yeah, that happens yeah. in like December though. I guess will be the hottest. Hot, uh, this like late December, mid January is the the yeah. bridge. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy Fair to enough. like wrap your head around. So, that. have you been able to take any vacations? I haven't yet. Yeah. You know, like I just recently opened a restaurant, so it's yep, like yep, I don't, yep. my time is obviously limited. At this well, point. well, let's just segue into that. So, so Santiago is the head chef and owner of Ilda and Silva. Um, Ilda is a restaurant. Um, if you're an old school uh, Sylvan or been here a long time or went to college at Western in downtown Silva, you know the split where the road goes, you know, it splits one way. And at that fork is where Ilda is. And, and there's a story to that that, um, that Santiago will, will share with us. Um, but, man, I have been so impressed with it. 
Um, it is such a great addition to downtown Silva. The food is absolutely amazing. Um, so, you know, tell us a little bit about Ilda and, um, you know. Um, so the, the uh, restaurant used to be called Meatballs mm -hmm. uh, back in the 80s and until 90s, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, well, I w we were living in New York and my wife is like, hey, do you want to take a long weekend to my hometown? Sure. Mm -hmm. So she grew up here? She grew up here. Okay. Yeah. And then, well, we show up here for a long weekend. Uh, it was amazing, like, in between, like, the life, uh, rivers, outdoors. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, all these are just complement. What was and what you're was living in, in New York City, not just yeah. New York, but New York City. No, in yeah, we were living in, in Brooklyn, actually. Brooklyn. Okay. Okay. We were Brooklyn. living in Brooklyn. Okay. And so have you ever heard of Spectacular yeah, Ginger Beer? <laughs> 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 Sounds so <laughs> familiar. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, end of the story, like, we end up moving uh, to Silva, opening these uh, restaurants in the same location that it used to be Meatballs mm -hmm. because... Uh, Karen, it was Crystal's, my wife's stepmother. Okay. We bought it back. We were trying to like, just renew the restaurant and bring that life. What well, it used to be. And, and the building was so dilapidated over Yeah, it was, years, it was looking rough. Years of just being ignored. Yeah. yeah just sitting there. Let, let me tell you, it was rough. <laughs> it was rough. What what all did you find in there? Oh, I found an onion under the stove. No, then it didn't grow for years. It was a plant. <laughs> it was a, it's like this <laughs> mutant thing. It was amazing. <laughs> you found an onion growing in there. Yeah, yeah, no, because it was. When was the last time it was a restaurant? I mean, um, gosh, I want to say twelve. To four, that's what I'm thinking. Oh six, oh seven. Um, Alex had started playing baseball and football. That was 06. There were still some in there, and then it kind of went. It I went remember away. going to it when it was so meatball been still years. in the early 2000s. Yeah. I want to say 2001 or mm, two, it was maybe still meatball. Yeah. And it then, changed. It changed. And then that guy, he did a lot of the, you know, the windows, the funky yeah. windows yeah. and stuff in it. And it was, and it just didn't last long. Yeah. And then when it was uh, Mill and Main. Mill and Main. Main. That's yeah. it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, Mill and Main. That's the name, right? Mill and Main. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes. That is correct. Well, well I, w I was wondering when the building was just, they were just going to tear it down and make parking. Well, I, I kind of so. wondered if that might be coming um, as well. But there's <laughs> I, a, I wonder not. a lot of. Well, <laughs> No, I mean you wonder. We were wondering that if it was coming. Oh, okay, I got you. No, you're speaking in past tense. Yeah. Yes, I said I was wondering if it was going to, <laughs> but it used to be, you know, the gas station a long time ago. Yeah, I wonder I saw if it, that picture if it, of it fell under some kind of protected, mm -hmm. because of the age and the historical yeah. type aspect of it. That's interesting. Are there yeah. still tanks under the ground? Since it was a gas station way back when? It was a golf. Well, there's a basement uh, under the wine bar, right? Yes. There's a basement under that. Yes. On Back Street. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, so actually. it comes out. Yes, it's a walkout. Yeah, yeah. yeah, correct. And the basement it shares both of the buildings. Okay. okay. So there is probably tanks under. Yeah. Because like when we're when we're building the patio, the pergola, there were certain parts that we couldn't touch. Uh yeah. Wow. So we kind of figured. Well, yeah. it is it is absolutely beautiful, and uh, anyone listening owes it to yourself to to go in there and visit. I rec uh, reservations. Uh, yeah, highly recommend the reservation for weekends just to for make sure. sure that you're going to have a good experience. Well, where where'd the name come from? What's the Ilda? Ilda is my grandmother. Okay. okay. Yeah, so Ilda Divella, okay. a Sicilian lady, always in a bad mood. That's how <laughs> that's how they are. <laughs> that's how we are. <laughs> that's how we are. Like, how bad. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, we were looking for a name, and like, so I want to do something that uh, represent the Italian, uh, Sicilian, ethnic, then Karen's was representing in something, then it will fill up my story as well. Yeah. And uh, Ilda come up. So right. That's perfect. That's, great. Can, that's a great marriage of, of ideas that are coming together. Yeah. So, no, we're pretty happy with what we've done and I'm well, still pushing for. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well, I know my, my first experience with you, Santi, I remember you, you come, I, I remember people, first of all, that it kind of, it does weird out some customers sometimes, I think, when they come in one time and then they come in a year and a half later and I remember them. So, but I remember events like what I'm about to say. I remember you came in and we're, we're talking about flies and I knew somebody had been working in that location 
on some remodel. One, you know, we always wondered what's going on down there. What's going yeah, on we there? saw him working on the roof. Stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So, um, and he said, "Yeah, I'm, you know, working on the restaurant. We're going to open a restaurant." I was like, "Oh, cool! What, what kind of restaurant?" And uh, somebody want to get that? <laughs> Phone's ringing. Uh, <laughs> we're closed. The voicemail again. Um, but I remember what struck me was when you mentioned the the Italian cuisine, but the made from scratch pasta. Talk right. to us a little bit yeah. about that. Yeah, we do all the pastas in house uh, from like semolina flour, water, uh, or uh, doppio zero and egg flour. Like it's, it's, it sounds simple, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it takes a lot of labor and love yeah. to make yeah. it right. So yeah, we do every pasta in house. Uh, we try to do as like as traditional as possible mm -hmm. in certain point. Yeah, and well, it's doing pretty well. Like. Like we love our pastas, we love our team. Man, the, the the flavor that comes out in in these pastas is oh, fresh pasta is awesome. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. like getting what, some fresh. How pasta. far in advance are you? Like if you're if you're serving for Friday night, how far in advance are you making that pasta? Friday morning. Friday morning. Wow, that quick. Yeah, Friday morning. Uh, every day we do pasta. Uh, once a week we receive a hog. Mm -hmm. I receive a whole hog. On Tuesdays and a whole lamb on Wednesday. Yeah, I wondered if the country ham was going to make it in. Yeah, the I was wondering where the leg, uh, the the ham leg was, man. I thought you. I have it in the car. It's you in the car. Say, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So you get a, a lamb and a pig every week. So you yeah. butcher it. Yeah. Or somebody there butcher. I don't know. Yeah, do you no, butcher? I'm doing. It. You, you, you do the butcher. You, yeah, you have to show up one uh, Tuesday morning and yeah. see what's the procedure like divided by muscles. Uh, Right now, we're having the open uh, belly that is being braced on innovation beer for a good eight hours at this point. Okay. Um, so that's going to go special in the weekends. Yeah. Um, the rest of the pork, 60% will go towards meatballs. And then we have a couple other dishes and it require different cuts on different parts of the pork. So we're trying to like keep it as a like, whole mm -hmm. animal as possible. Yeah. We, don't waste, we, we can't waste anything. Mm -hmm. So... That's the way I grow up. That's the way I learned in New York, and I will continue doing the same. So, way. what did you do in New York? Like, uh, why? Wh what brought you to New York? Number one, and then what were you doing while you were there? Um, I was living in Spain, 2010. Espa yeah. España. España. <laughs> España. <laughs> well, the, the, the Spain, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of theta. Deja de ti. <laughs> pretty, pretty well pronounced. <laughs> um. My uncle lives in New York. He said, hey, you should give it a try. All right. I was like kind of coming back from uh, Spain. I was spending a couple uh, weeks in, in my town, little town in the middle of Argentina. So I, I hate this. <laughs> so he's like, all right, let's try New York. And I moved to New York, and I found this energy, this like self of progression in multiple ways. And it's like, I, I can be here. I can live here. I can grow if yeah. I wanted to, if I push it hard enough. Mm -hmm. And actually, everything for the first six to eight months were rough. You know, like New York doesn't stop yeah. in any point. Yeah. And they're, and they're right. not forgiving at all. No. They just, and it's yeah. not cheap. It is not cheap. Yeah. So, but I, after I, you get used to certain points, you're part of the system. Yeah. Mm. And it works. Mm -hmm. uh, also, New York, like, Yes, it's a huge, massive city. But when you find your own people, the circle gets much smaller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I your used community. to... Your like, Correct. Like, I used to go and say, I'm going to go get a couple of flies. I, I had this fly shop on Midtown Manhattan, third floor. Yeah, third Ur Urban. Urban. You went to yeah. it? Yeah. What's it yeah. called? Uh, urban something. The, the Urban Angler. Urban, urban Angler. Angler. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. It, they're super you go in that little door up that little tiny it, elevator. They're it's super <laughs> creepy, and you don't know where you're going to end up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it is so weird, man. Right, right. It's super cool. But it's cool to go see. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you should try a uh, beaver kill this week. It's happy. Yeah. Sure. And like when you start meeting your people, things get easier. You make a life in there. Yeah. It may be a huge, massive city. Right. The circle of people that you meet is small. Right, right. That yeah. makes sense. So where were you working when you were there? Because you were, you were in the restaurant business, yeah, right? Yeah, I was in the restaurant business. I worked for a while on uh, Bob, Jan George, and then Piora, uh, the Baccarat Hotel, 
porteño restaurant. So I done most of them, like fine dining, Michelin mm -hmm. star restaurants. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't know if I've ever eaten in a Michelin star restaurant. I don't think I have. I know what? A Michelin star restaurant. They've won the Michelin star or multiple Michelin stars in some cases. Yeah, that's what I said. It's it's up there, dude. It's pricey. Yeah. I it's thought you were telling me. No, 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 no. I'm like, no. It's, like it's, one, like one star shouldn't be as pricey as three. Let yeah. Me in that way. Right. Like one star means like a good dining experience. Two stars would mean a, a really good dining experience is sure worth a trip. Yeah. A three star means this is once in your life. You yeah. Know, okay. 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 Let me put it that way. And is there any more than three stars? Like, does anybody no, have a fourth star? No, from Michelin. I yeah. mean, if you go towards other rating systems, such as New York Times, such a uh, like James Beard Award, like uh, they they all categorize in different ways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, three Michelin stars means money. Totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, gonna yeah. pay a lot. Right. Yeah. Right. Interesting. That is. One day I'll go eat at one. Well, you should. Like, there is a couple places. Even doesn't have to be New York. When Chicago, Seattle. Are they? Do they do typically like in larger cities, or is there like some like no, podunk like small in, town? Like in Ilda, yeah. Could Ilda <laughs> ever win one? No, uh, North Carolina is not being rated by uh, Michelin. So, like, even if you went to Charlotte or Raleigh, there's no, no restaurant. Oh, really? Mm, yeah. Hmm. I feel left out. <laughs> what um, <laughs> it ha in in wh where 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 would you want Ilda to be? Yeah. That's a tough question. Like, I start with a certain concept on my head, and it's been evolving since, like, we opened the last five months. Mm -hmm. And I definitely don't want to be pretentious. That's one of my sure. goals from the beginning. It's like I'm moving out of this pretentious life because yeah. I don't feel that I belong here. Mm -hmm. I feel that I belong in a certain place with everybody should be able to try a play. Right, right, Period. right. Right? Yeah. I think it'll, the, in the next three, four years, I'm going to see a transition where where I want it to be, which is not in anywhere at this point. Okay. Um, I don't want to be over the top. Right. I don't want to be on the bottom. I just want to be in a good place when the you show up and it's a good experience, something that you will be really yeah. happy to see once a week on yeah. every one and then. Right. Well, and that's, that's, cool. that's, I think, the first time my wife and I went, um, you know, it, it, you guys were so busy. I mean, it was a wait or you no reservations. So we just sat at the bar, you know, and we, we had an appetizer and I think Stacy had a salad and we had a, had an entree. Um, and it was like low key. Right. Right. And I think we, we did do the, um, the dessert is unbelievable. Yeah. What's the name of it? Um, tiramisu. Tiramisu. That tiramisu. one. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. The tiramisu. It's is got alcohol really in it. <laughs> Oh yeah, they cook it out, but it's, it's good. pretty boozy. Yeah, it's pretty. I love. It's pretty boozy. Yeah. It's pretty, mm -hmm. I, I it's it. pretty boozy. I, it's pretty boozy. I, I, I saw that thing on yeah. Moonshine for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but so so that was that was like the laid back. Like let's come in. We don't really we can't pronounce anything that we're ordering, but it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the next time we came back with Emery and Kelly, that was our experience. Like that right. was like so, wife and I we went just casually. But with friends, we came and it was the experience. You know, we did the fine wine. You know, we did the the app, multiple appetizers, um, and just all the flavors. Every time a plate came, it was just like, oh my gosh, we're in Silva. Like Silva, we're, we're experiencing <laughs> this. And and for me, food is very much an experience. Obviously, you can see. Yeah, I love food. Like, <laughs> <it's> great. <laughs> like every time I eat, it's an experience. But um, that was an unbelievable night, and and I encourage you folks, if, if you come up here with your significant other, try that experience. If you come up here with a group of friends, it's got that too. You can sit outside on the patio that uh, the patio that um, that Santi and, and his crew built, um, and and it's just an amazing experience. So um, that that's it's unbelievable. Hey, so is is I'm I'm going straight from like that to yeah. behind the scenes. Is it like Gordon Ramsay in that kitchen? Is everybody screaming at everybody? And how does that work? No, not really. Because you're pretty close to the people eating it. <laughs> yeah, that's a certain point. But I, 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 can, I can lose it. I can. Yeah. People are seeing at me. Have <laughs> you lost it yet? I can. Have you, have you down there lost it? 
Uh, not in a loud way. Oh, you not in a loud you get way. Quiet? No, I'm just looking at you with these like, creepy <laughs> eyes and saying, if you don't do this, I will murder you right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, the restaurant that I grew up, yes. Yeah? It's sort of like Yeah. It's much more as a competition of like cooks, like who is. That was... Oh, in, yeah, that's New York. That's so, so York. crazy to me how like competitive cooking is. Because I don't think of it that it way, is. you know? Oh, they, they smell your food. Where, where were you <laughs> on the yeah. totem pole in the New York? <laughs> uh, I ended up in the last couple of places as an executive sous chef. Okay. Uh, I started as a commis. Like, let me put it this way. Like, New York is ruled as a uh, French cuisine. Okay. So all yeah, yeah, the yeah. kitchens, their fine dining, they rule with the same, like, I would say, like, pyramid of uh, mm -hmm. cooks. Hierarchy. And you start as a, yeah, yeah. Commie is like the prep person. Okay. And then you have Chef de Partie. And then uh, there is a junior sous chef, sous chef, executive sous chef, chef de cuisine. Um, and then you have all, like owners. And most of the time there is a maitre d' involved in all those in between. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a lot of position that need to be filled out. So the yeah. guy on the bottom, he's just like cutting potatoes. Mm, <laughs> no, actually not. He's doing more than that. Yeah, it's, it's not the, just the guys on the bottom. Like they show up super early. They like start being like cleaning and, and cutting the potatoes and they making the potato mousseline or mashed potatoes or whatever we're gonna call. It. And then like when the chef de party, who is the guy who is gonna like, actually cook? Yeah, show up. All the prep, all the mise en place have to be already done. Okay. Right. They only execute. They don't prep. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting. That is. So do they like yell like you cut the potatoes too big? They won't cook right. Because if like you cut one too big and the one is too small, yeah, they, one they cooks cook faster. It. Yeah, uh, correct. So the mashed mm. potato have all the two two different textures. Yeah, means it's trash. Yeah, means you gotta throw it away. So that's when they get mad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Well, and you know when so it, Ilda when you walk into Ilda. You, you got the host station, the hostess stand, and she's going to seat you. And when you look immediately left, you'll see Santi. And you're finishing plates? Yes, I'm an expediter. Or also an uh, I plate. Basically, they, I have a line behind me. Mm -hmm. I have uh, cold, hot apps, pastas, and meat in between. I, you basically run the kitchen as a band. You control the okay. band. You control all the band. Each one play an instrument. You're the maestro. Now, and we all have to play at the same time. Yeah. Because all the food have to show up at the window at the same time. Yeah. Right? So when I do, like, I need table 34, Sala knows what's 34, they all know what's 34, and they all show up to my station at the same time. I played it, and run it, please, wow. 34. Minutes gone. Well, that's it. So how many people are in your kitchen right now? Like, how many... Mm. On a normal yeah. night. On a normal night, four to five. That's a small kitchen. Yeah, very small. Yeah. So you didn't have to yell too loud. <laughs> yeah. No. But geez, man. I mean, it's not big in there, so it's like just I can imagine everybody like bumping into each other. <laughs> it's amazing nobody gets burnt all the time. Oh, uh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so, so COVID really played a part here in the evolution of where Ilda is now because I met you pre-COVID or pre-pandemic, right. I should say. Um, and had the wine bar even opened? The wine bar wasn't open. So when I show up to town, I was going to open Ilda, COVID hit, the water just blow up. Right, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for restaurants, you're yeah, shuttered. It's like yeah. everything, yeah, we just literally went close to that. I met my partner and I said, whoa, so I have a wine bar and I don't know anything about wine. So great, I know about wine. Know about yeah. food. How can we do? <laughs> so well, we ended up partnering, uh, opening a wine bar before we open Ilda. Okay. Yeah. So we start with uh, my wife taking care of the wine selection, and I was start doing like small plates, such yep. as tapas like, situations. Yeah, the little charcuterie board type yeah, stuff. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. yeah, we did a tasting there, and, and Crystal was pregnant with your first, and she, man, she was, y'all were real close to having your first child <laughs> when we came. Yeah. Well, now that guy, Cito, my. Cito. My, Cito. My, uh, How old is he now? Son. A year and a month. Wow. Wow. 
What an experience, man. Opening a restaurant, two, right? Wine bar and cellar, and Ilda, and first child. In a pandemic situation. Wow. In that a pandemic. Was, yeah. That's, that's it, impressive. It a, yeah, it was a busy year with uh, unexpected busy. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's been amazing to watch it develop down there. Um, tell us about this wine. Talk about Oh, Garzón. 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 Uh, Garzón is uh, Garzón is actually a town in Uruguay. Uh, the wine is being produced by uh, Francis Malman. Francis Malman mm -hmm. is like the chef now in Argentina about like you know this primitive way to cook. Mm -hmm. Everything is open fires, and he's amazing in what he does. Mm -hmm. So is that the guy that was on the TV show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chef's table. Table. Yeah. table. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So like, as Ameri America. Culinary basis, a couple guys such as Thomas Keller, uh, Alain Panis. In the Argentina side, there is two guys. One of those is Francis Mama. He started as a chef for, I would say, the last 25 years mm -hmm. and now become a wine producer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Delicious wine, full body, um, complex. I would say it's soaky, it's not extremely in the dry side. But it's an amazing wine. Mm -hmm. It's one of those wines that if you have a uh, steak on top of a fire and you're looking to get a nice dinner with friends, yeah, that's, that's something it. That you should. So, what makes a wine dry? I, I mean, I'm not a, I don't know anything about wine. So, well, you have kind to go down the wine cellar. Well, take, I mean, kind of give us like a brief thing because you described a lot of, a lot of information there that probably a lot of our listeners may not know anything about and are a little intimidated, like walking to a fly shop. For the first time. Right. Um, what do you make it dry? There is multiple options for that question. Uh, one it will be the skin contact. Like how the skin contact means tanning. Right? You know, like when you eat a, a yeah. walnut and yeah. you say, oh, my mouth is kind of dry. It feels weird. You know, so it feels like mm -hmm. rubbery. Yeah. Those are tannins. Okay. Ah. The same thing happens on the skin of the grape. Depending how long the wine has been in contact with the skin, is how rubbery, how much tannins, and that translates to dryness. Huh. Interesting. Okay. okay. And also, it can be what is age. If it is an oak, French oak is a little less, a little mild than American oak. American oak is dry. Okay. Dry. So okay. a lot of the California stuff Correct. is dry. Correct. Okay. Like, and also, it can be like age on uh, terracotta. And with pieces, oh, wow. of pieces of oak into the wine themselves, that would make it even drier. Yeah. That'd be like the real deal. That's how they used to keep it back in the day mm -hmm. and then clay jars. Hmm. So, again, probably wine sounds too complicated, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Well, yeah. so and that's when, so so I became like veganish and I was like, all right, I got to come off some of this beer stuff. Veganish? I thought you called it plant based. It's plant based, but it's really <laughs> veganish because I go eat a dilda and I'm going to have some lamb, <laughs> like, and some squid ink or something. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I wanted to learn wine. And I remember, you know, you would come in, you had opened um, the wine cellar, and I was like, hey, I don't, I want to. So we did a wine tasting. And that's that to me was kind of like going into the shop, and that that was like a guided trip, you know. I mean, we we had the how do you say it? Char, char, charcuterie, charcuterie board, um, with some of his. If he says it, it'll sound better. Say I, charcuterie. I charcuterie. Yeah, see, it just sounds it's better. Accent. It's an yeah, accent. It's the accent, man. Charcuterie? It just sounds right. <laughs> so we had some of his uh, truck ham, and uh, some of his breads. It was truck it was. <laughs> <laughs> he literally, hey, he really does have like a leg of ham with him, like country all the time. ham, right? Country yeah. ham, it's, yeah. cured. it's already cured. It's good. It's, it's cured, it's totally good. Uh, can, I swear to you, he does. Country ham is the prosciutto, prosciutto di Parma, ham bon de Bellon, or any other fancy ham that you can find from here. Ham bone. Yeah, it's the same procedure. They're like really well raised animals right. that is being cured on like salt, sugar, and sulfites for a certain amount of time, and then ham yeah. for a certain same thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, so so the, the the wine tasting was completely like having a guided trip into trout fishing, but but it was wine. So I learned the dry, the opposite of dry. What do you call the opposite of dry? Not wet. Uh, oh, oh, in, oh. Into wine? Yeah. Um, Full. Yeah. Mm, I say more Not dry. Into the mild, into the acidic side, into yeah. like the 
soft and easy yeah. to drink. So we learned like, I, like I, what wine to pair yeah. with what foods, and then the Malbec. And Malbec is by far my favorite, um, partly because I mean it's Argentinian. Yeah, and we've got great fly fishing in Argentina. So what's Malbec like? Why is it Malbec? What what's that stand for? Malbec. Uh, Malbec is a grape. Okay. Um, is it I, only grow in Argentina? Is that the reason? No, it's, uh, it's being imported from France to okay. Argentina okay. in eighteen seventies to nineteen twenties. That's okay. where like most of the vines being imported. Uh, normally they're aged in oak. Uh, they're dry, full body. Uh, most of the time, like you have like smoky notes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like robust type of wine okay. into the Argentinian side. You can have some like new producers into the Malbecs are kind of experimenting a little more and going towards the different fermentations. You will have a little more funky. Yeah, funky means in the way, the good way to be funky. You yeah, know, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, but it's yeah, like probably. 60% of the production of the country is Malbec. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For a good reason. Yeah. The, 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 the vine grows pretty well. The terroir, when, you, when I say terroir, is basically the soil plus the climate and the altitude. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right? It, it develops pretty well in the country. Like yeah. in the west side of the country, going towards Mendoza, Salta, uh, Neuquén, um, until that point. Uh, uh, like, there is a couple good good uh, vineyards on Chile as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Chile is so high then the vine have to like dig themselves so deep then the grape is perfect. Oh wow. Yeah. Interesting. Also Chile is pretty good for fly fishing. Yeah. 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 Just the other side of the just mountain. Just a little yeah. bit. Just <laughs> <laughs> well and you know plus two that this type of wine pairs so nicely with the traditional cuisine of Argentina yeah. which is heavily red meat right? Yeah. Correct. Like the um, central Argentina is uh, bio cows in eighty percent of the population mm -hmm. going towards the sound lamb is. Oh, there. okay. Right, right. That's interesting. Now, do you, as a guest coming into the wine cellar to go through a tasting, is that something that you have to book in advance or? Can you just kind of come in and do that? No, you can come in, and we will guide you through a certain amount of wines, and depending what we have by the glass or what was your preference, we can make something happen for you. We also have a wine club that we select three oh. different, yeah, three different bottles a month. So um, we go towards uh, different regions and different countries and different parts of the world. Okay, I didn't per know month. about that. Yeah. Per month, yeah. I might to join the club. That's uh, cool. Wine's one of those things I don't know a lot about it, and the times I've tasted it, it's always probably been cheap wine, so it's never always been like, eh. I can tell but you about some nice wine. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I think I think <laughs> what I'm worried about, it's like fly fishing. When you get into it, you're like, yeah, I'll buy the cheap rod. You know, I'll get it. I want a little nicer, a little nicer. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to want $200 bottle, two hundred dollar bottle of wines every mm. time. Yes or no? <laughs> okay. Yes or no? That's kinda, the answer that's I That's kind of the answer we line. say in here, isn't yes it? And no. Yes and no. You don't need an expensive rod, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it will do the same work than buy a cheap rod in the yeah. end of the day. Depending, that's up to you. But your yourself as a quality fly fisher, we will like this the expensive one <laughs> because yeah. you yeah. already, you know, like well, like for my experience, like with with the friends, I mean, we were we were having the full spiel. Okay. So a twenty dollar bottle of wine would not have fit that experience. Like we mm. we we splurged. We went with a yeah. little bit more. A lot more expensive bottle of wine for that experience, more than I've ever done before, and that was part of that experience was that fine wine experience. Right, like the what you get at Ingalls just wasn't going to cut it that night. Mm -hmm. Like, you can you buy good wines at grocery stores? Like, is, is, is once in a while you get a good producer with a good vintage in a good year, and it's in that being pretty good. We yeah. we found this like South African Sauvignon Blanc in brooklyn for eight dollars in this like random wine shop it's like that's amazing i take two cases of that <laughs> 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 you know that's what i mean awesome. yeah but most of the time yes like better producing the the better they treat their grapes the the, the smaller producer they are they need, they need to add more money to the price yeah. in order to survive and that's how it works that's interesting yeah so do you think like 
and I, I know different regions are going to be like, well, that one's good for this, and it pairs well with this. But like you know, obviously, most people, at least in America, view wine as Italy. You know, like that's just like what's in your head is that's where you go to get good wine. But there's obviously plenty of places. But comparing like everything that you've known, like Argentina, Italy, Sicily, California, like what do you what do you think would like for somebody that's starting? Where should they look? Should they go to a certain continent and and not go to that continent, but look for wine from that continent? Uh, yes, I will go off by regions, and I will try to just kind of go in a specific grape. Yeah. Right. And what what is that region known for? Okay. So let's say, okay, I'm going to go to Argentina. I'm going to go to Malbec. Perfect. Sounds good. So had a couple of Malbecs from different parts of the country and then compare it to each other. Yeah. And then if, okay, I'm going to go to France and I'm going to have um, Bordeaux. Yeah. Not France, like super heavy, rich. Bordeaux yeah. is like the king of uh, France. So I'm going to go to Italy. Let's say I'm going to have a, a Barolo or Barbaresco. Again, they're specific for that region. They go yeah. pretty well. It's easy to don't get lost. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, it's super, super specific to be drinking that wine and say, okay, the characteristic of this wine, they're always the same, no matter yeah. what they taste. Okay. Yeah, I remember me, me and my wife went to Italy um, with some friends, I don't know, 12 years ago or so now, and we never knew what we were drinking. You just say, bring wine, and it was you know, <laughs> in, in a craft, basically, and they just kind of divvy it out, and yeah. I don't know... You just, I, I don't know if they were charging us by the craft or if it was by the glass or what. And it was decent. You know, it's probably the best one I've ever had <laughs> r- other than buying what I've had here in America. So that's where I was like, eh, this is decent. I can drink this. But I've never acquired the taste where I probably should, um, should expand a little more. Well, America's lately is going s- super well now about like certain regions of wine. I yeah. mean, California explored it a couple of years ago. Now, Oregon is, uh, wow. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, Oregon is going all in. Huh. Interesting. Well, and, you know, North Carolina has certainly replaced tobacco fields with vineyards. vineyards. Right. So yeah. where does North Carolina wine stand up in the big picture of... The thing with North Carolina is it's hard to grow wine here. The humidity yeah. of North Carolina and the, 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 the heat, uh, it will, like... So how the buying work is, like, you basically have to treat it bad. Okay. Let me put it that way. Well, yeah, I mean, you step on it. Yeah, you step on it, <laughs> right? So the vine have to, like, dig for nutrients uh-huh. on the soil. I gotcha. When the vine has everything that it needs to grow, it will grow like wheat. Yeah. Right? So the, the, the grape itself is so full of water that the wine itself gets diluted. Okay. So you, and then it's like, Depending if you planted in the like facing east or facing west, is how much are you gonna get in the rain side? Oh, so it's hard. The I state gotcha. itself is hard to grow. Interesting. So we could maybe we could grow okay grapes, but it needs to go finish somewhere else. Uh, actually, it's like you can grow mm, grapes, but you can finish it well. Okay. 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 So you that's like what maybe Biltmore is doing, right? Or Childress down in central part of the state. I met a guy, no, even <coughs> like two months ago. It's like I grow my own wine. He lives on Franklin. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, I grow my own wine. There's a lot of people making their own stuff around here. Yeah, <laughs> some muscadine <laughs> wine. Yeah. That's what it's old like, Southerns I, do. I, like I open it. He's like, are you really making this here? Yeah. Nah, I I don't believe. Oh like, really? Yeah. It was that good. It was so good. Wow. He's like, well, I do this traditional uh, method, and I plant only this grape, this amount of uh, grape. I got it to where, like, this old, and the guy had a system. What was his name? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's mixing that with some moonshine or something. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That's, 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 that's why. That's why. Uh, there we go. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Mercy. That's so cool, man. So, so let's tie it all into fly fishing. Um, obviously, you fly fish. When did you start fishing? Is um, that just a part of growing up in Argentina? You're gonna fish? Y- no, not really. Like my my dad doesn't fish, but okay. my grandfather he loves. Like, yeah. like he's like that was his weekend getaway from to fish to fish. Yeah. 
Uh, I grew up in Córdoba. There was a lot of like um, pejerrey. There is, it looks like a brancino. It's a, it's a bass. Okay. Kind of, kind of looking. Uh, that was all get away in the weekends. And then I get into like fly fishing when I was 18. Okay. Uh, I moved to uh, the city and I met a guy. He was dying flies. And he kind of introduced me like roughly what it was. I never paid much that attention to it until I moved out of the city to this little town in the mountains in Cordoba. And I really got hooked up with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, um, this guy, like, he you got me. hooked up with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, uh, sent me out, gave me a, a rod, a reel, like, basically set up everything for me. Yeah. He said, well, this is the fly that you need to use. And in the beginning, it was horrible. I learned how to cast with YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <I mean>. Okay. <laughs> Whatever so, works. Yeah. It, it took me close to a year to get a fair trial. Yeah. That sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was the beginning. That's, That's cool. Awesome. Man. Where's your favorite place you've ever fished? Fly fished. Got to preface it with fly fishing. The East Branch of the Delaware. Oh, yeah, oh, good call. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it's just right out. That was what an hour and a half out of the city. I uh, would put it along, like maybe two and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, just like, fun and just fun. Like night. That's the thing. Like Oh uh, really? Yeah, you do not like like kind of road imitations. Yeah. And you just like drop it on top of the water at night and you just follow with a flashlight until you <laughs> see this horrible <laughs> thing coming behind and grab it. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> they, they pay for themselves. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That is. That's so cool. Well, I uh I gotta go to the wine bar now and do a wine tasting. Do it, do a <laughs> tasting, and and then um, make some reservations with Kara, man. It, it's yeah. the the food is stellar at Ilda. So, um, compliments to the chef, man. It's 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 been amazing yeah. to watch you guys develop down there. No, it's so cool to see something go from what it was to what it is. That's yeah, what's thank neat you. about it. Yeah, it, it's gorgeous inside, really well done. So we just got to get some uh, mules on the drink menu down there. So. Oh, I can make that happen. I can make I that do, happen. Uh, I'll come down there and drink three or four if you got a good mule. What is your um? What is your hours? Um, on the wine bar we do Wednesday through Sunday from twelve to nine. Idla we do Wednesday through Sunday from five to ten. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So dinner, dinner only. Yeah. For real dinner though. only. Yeah. I'm doing some brunch on Sundays. It's not every Sunday at this point, so we're kind of trying the yeah. The Just seeing if it's something yeah. that you want to do. Well, I mean, when you're making stuff completely from scratch, I, I don't know how anybody can expect a restaurant to do that and be open for like three meals a day. Like, yeah, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's well, just even possible. six days. A, I think it's great what you're doing five days a week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I think when you're you know making everything like that, starting from, I mean, you're getting. The whole animal delivered and butchering and you know all like it's fun yeah it's fun like it's so cool. I think people have to understand that they're only open five days a week, but they're working more than that. Oh yeah, Behind yeah. I mean, the you scenes. were in there today. This is Tuesday. We're recording, so you were taking care of a pig in there today. Yeah. Yeah. So what was, hey, na- was, what was the pig's name? I don't want. Is <laughs> <laughs> that <Is it>, Wilbur? <laughs> was, was it Wilbur? Was it Wilbur? <laughs> Wilbur. <laughs> well, uh, you know, kind of throw a teaser out there. Uh, Santi and I have been kicking around some ideas of ways that Tuck Fly Shop and Santi's skills can collaborate on some things. So interesting. We'll put that out there and hold more details. Which for that sounds like to me, it's day. fishing and food. I which mean, just is awesome. And wine, why not? And wine, yeah, yeah throw wine <laughs> in there. Fish and food and wine. Fish, yeah. fishing, food and wine. We're gonna make it happen. So it's gonna be a special thing. Um, with a with a limited time, limited availability kind of thing, but we'll we'll give more details out about that as we as we figure it out. That'll be cool. That'd be interesting. I've got, I've got one more question. Why is it wine and cheese? Like, why does everybody want cheese with wine? Like, why is that like a great pairing? What it grows together, it goes together. Okay. So, like traditional, most of the uh, grapes grows in land, and there is some sort of animals growing as well. Okay. So. 
in 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 that sense like the if you go to southern italy to sicily to like edna mountain like that you will great like super super uh, like edna rosso's or super good wines and the cheeses are amazing see why these two things go so well together because they grow together okay that's a good answer yeah, yeah i like that's that it's pretty simple too it's like i like that oh, brilliant why did i think of that grows together goes together <laughs> I, I can get so deep into it. It's like moonshine like, yeah. and greasy back beans. They just, <laughs> <laughs> they just go together. That's fantastic. It's all about the corn. Well, thanks for coming <laughs> on, man. No, yeah. I'd like to have you back on here. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Yeah, that was fun. I learned a lot, which is yeah, cool. That's, I, yeah, that's why I was listening. Yeah, this is totally out of my element. Yeah. Man. Yeah. If it ain't pinto beans and cornbread, I'm kind of, <laughs> you know. Got to form Corn that, and beans grow gotta together. That's right, baby. Corn can be in the same garden. <laughs> hey, wait, we're so well together. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Form that table muscles going there, man. Um, well, yeah. just a couple quick things then before we get into a, a quick fishing report. I know we, we don't want to hold everybody up too, too long. But um, we've got a couple events coming up. Um, let me pull that up real quick. Yeah, please do that. Uh, hook, line, and drinker. Okay, uh, this is a this is a the festival for fly fishing and beer. It's basically a beer festival, and fly fishing joins in. Um, that is coming up this month in August. I think and it's twenty first, isn't it? I, I want to say it's twenty first, but I'm going to the website it's just next, to next make Saturday. Sure. Yeah, a week from this Saturday. It's yeah, next so, Saturday. Um, yep, it is three p.m. to seven p.m. So we make sure this is in the hottest part. Of You're going to be sweating <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it was hot when it was in may now it's august i mean you're gonna be drinking beer you're, that makes you sweat so oh. don't worry about the sweat oh my god okay um we've had a really cool start to august so i hope you know it's really hot right no you missed it man we had like I, some low 50 degree I, oh, it was nice it. while we, you were gone there yeah. was one day it didn't get above 72 and it oh, didn't rain. You serious? Yes. Uh, yeah, you missed the the nice yes. summertime weather. It was amazing. Um, so send um, me away more, fellas. <laughs> hopefully, some of that weather comes back for the twenty first. But yeah. um, there's going to be obviously lots lots of uh, showcasing of Jackson County uh, fly fishing trail uh, outfitters, um, and uh, there's going to be some music, and obviously there's going to be some beer there. So the uh, Jackson County uh, Chamber of Commerce puts this on. They do a fantastic job. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. So if you can come on out, I did see where that Thursday night, this is kind of a local plug that Thursday night Zaxby's. So Bogart's burned. Okay. They had a little grease fire, get out of hand. Zaxby's is doing a fundraiser for, uh, Bogart's employees on the 19th, uh, 30%, 30% of the profits. That's pretty that strong. Night. That is stout. That's yeah, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Rogers is, uh, that's, that's, that's his that's name. Pretty is, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Mr. Yeah, Mr. Rogers is stepping up. Good guy. He likes to fly fish. Yeah, he uh, does. He he's really stepping up, and that's just the kind of guy he is. It, that's, awesome. that's fantastic. So um, so come support the Bogarts family August nineteenth at Zaxby's, and um, and then that Saturday, go fishing in the morning. Go take a nap, and then come to Hook Line and Drinker there in the evening. Drink a so, bunch of water before you come. Drink a bunch of water. <laughs> it's so, gonna be hot. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Absolutely, but you know, in between on that Friday night. You know, give the wine bar a real to a, a try. So, but that's a big event coming up. We also, and th this is a COVID reschedule. This was a, you know, cancellation right. from Canceled 2020. Last year. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so we brought it to August of 21, right? Yeah. This is like the third try. Yeah. They was going to do it in the spring so and they've had to push back. It's my understanding that in May we'll do it again. That's just normal time. Frame. Yeah. That's the normal time frame is to have it in May. Normal so schedule. we'll be back on regular schedule, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Lambda Chi Omega Alpha Delta hat. And so call and make all your reservations for the 21st after you go to the hook line and drinker to eat a deal. Though. Absolutely. But you need to make a reservation. Make a reservation. It's a Saturday night. Make a reservation. Absolutely. Um, fishing report? You the man. Brought to you by Norvax. Norvax! Tie better flies faster. Man, I just love that spinny thing. It makes life so much easier. You know, Preston was sitting over here today tying up some things on the spinny thing yeah i love it yeah i love do you it tie, do you tie flies too no you just fish i just, just fish yeah well that's all right we'll get you time flies it's like i don't oh, I, 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 I don't make wine i just drink it <laughs> 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 that's a good point uh, uh, so that's a good point yeah um 
What? Well, so we talked about water temps. Bobby swimming with blooming olives on, yeah. the, on the West Fork of the Pigeon. So we've had some this this cooler start that Shannon missed uh, to August has been amazing. Um, and you know it's been kind of dry. I mean we we've gotten into some scattered thunderstorms here in the last couple of days. I remember watching across the valley from me. I watched it rain almost two inches over by the Jackson County Airport. At my house, nothing. Uh, some guys came into Waynesville this morning and said, you know, where can we go where they got any water? And I was like, well, it just depends on what holler you're in. Because you go one holler over, they might have got that two inches. And I told them, I said, you go over to Scott's Creek, there's going to be plenty of water. Yeah, it's yeah. a typical summer pattern when it, it comes really to It really is. Now, typically, August, September, this is our dog days, it's going to dry up. But, you know, we're, we're these afternoon thunderstorms are, are really nice, actually, and they kind of keep everything cool and terrestrial bike going. So, you know, start the morning off with the blooming olives or the traditional mayflies. I've had, a, you know, yellow humpies, got a report they're doing really well. So, um, red, I always love throwing red this time of year. So your Royal stuff is, uh, really fun to do. And we've, we've got some really nice, uh, high vis ants with like that purple haze ice dub. Fire, 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 fire. They're amazing. Those yep. are, they do look so, good. So, um, so love those. They, they've done really well, but, uh, you know, fish, uh, Marvin always asked me, can you fish all day? You can unless you're bulling a chicken down on Caney Fort. So <laughs> it, it really depends on where you're at. You go, yeah. It, it, That's it. I mean, it, so it, pays it, really, the, it depends. Take the thermometer with yes. you. Watch your elevation. Uh, you, you know, if, if, if you, you can start the morning on Caney Fort, you can start the morning on low elevation creeks, but in the afternoon, start climbing the mountain. So, and that's where, that's where you're going to find your cooler water. Uh, and, and then, yeah, you can fish all day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Plunge pools, things where you got some drops mm-hmm. and it's going to have that water moving some, uh, you know, some turbulence in the water to keep it cool. That's, that's right. the key. That that's right. really the key. Uh, orange. Orange, this orange, time parachutes, orange comes in quick. Orange, orange palmers. Uh, those should be something that you're definitely having in your that's box. Right. Yes. The frost bugs have been singing for about three weeks. The old James Connor. This is where I heard this from an old time. So, James said that's eight weeks till our first frost when you start hearing them things. So five would be about right if you think where we're at that's right now. That's not that long from now. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. If you think about it. I know five, that, I mean, nah. Man, there is a ton of acorns already falling at my house, which Whoa. means that the winter might be rough. I have a feeling. You know, the past <laughs> acorns are falling. The past few Septembers have cooled down to the mid part of the month and it's fished really well. Yeah. No, it has. That's right. So. Uh, you know, we're you know we've got just a few more weeks here. You know, I'm predicting five more weeks, or you know, really less than five more weeks of, you know, hoodal type fishing where you need to watch it in there. You can still fish in the afternoon, just watch where you're at. But, um, and then folks, we're we're headed into fall quick. Like August is kind of like things are starting to change. You know, yeah. we're seeing orange come in mm-hmm. for the dry fly bite. Yeah, that tells us things are starting to. The shadows are getting longer. Days are getting shorter. Man, you've noticed the number of leaves that are falling off trees. There are, yes. Yeah. Part of that was that dry spell. I yeah, think we but had. I mean, June. but you get that. You get that breeze. The yeah. leaves blowing. It, and the other morning when I was out there with Harrison, shout out to Harrison. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I talked about it in the fishing report. It felt a little bit like fall, and it yep. had that fall feel to it. it. It was cool. You had the little breeze. We had leaves falling. Well, that it's day it didn't get above seventy six. You know, so you felt cool. Yeah. Well, and I was out there. And I was. Yeah. It felt real good. Yeah. In this, in the Waynesville shop. Yeah. You know. That's right. But it had that feel to it that morning. That's right. And yes. I told Harrison that. I said, "This kind of feels like a fall morning out here." Mm-hmm. And um, that's that's well, good to see. It's refreshing. I love it. I can count on one hand how many times I got to mow my yard the rest of the that's year. Right. Hey, is that one of them corduroy hats? Yeah, it, is. it is. You like it? I love it, man. Dude, it, I noticed it, when I was when I came back, we had that uh, new orange one with the. Uh, yep. Uh, with the wide. Yeah, I sold holes. some of those today, man. Yeah, and they're the as well, man. I those things are lightweight, man. They're yeah. lightweight. I wore one hiking. I hiked to Wesser Fire Tower Saturday. Amazing. Hike. Oh, yeah. Okay. But I wore one. I wore the orange one. I love, of course, I yeah. wore the orange one. Yeah. It fits me, number one. Might not look like it's supposed to fit me, but it's comfortable, so I don't really care. Right. Does it float? I don't know about that. You know, some of those hats like that kind of float. I, it's curious. so light. It's got to stay up on the surface. Yeah. A little bit. Gotcha. Yeah. Maybe put a little high and dry gel yeah. on it. Yeah. It'll float a little better. Yeah. I had a guy. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Just, I had a guy in the shop today. He was talking about the bugs on the creek, and he said, "Man, my hat's got so much deed in it, it'll kill a horse. Bug, <laughs> bugs don't bother me." <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my lord! That, oh my my heavens! But uh, yeah, I've seen some some new new gear yep. there for so sure, man. It's, it's already up on the web store. Awesome! Um, so check those out. Lots of new logo gear up. 
We've got fall sims uh, items trickling into the shop. So Shannon is in cardboard hell <laughs> again. <laughs> you know, I got. To, I told Dale. I said, "What the heck?" And I was clean about it. And but um, you know, getting all the product in for Waynesville kind of threw me the curve because you think preseason, you know, for fall, yeah. and had all those boxes, and I didn't even. I hadn't even – I'd slept, and I hadn't even put two and two together that there was more stuff coming. I think the and UPS man is even tired of bringing this I think boxes. so. It is like, oh, my gosh. Be- before yeah. we announced Waynesville, UPS guy, like, every day was bringing stuff. Oh, and, we were get- and the FedEx dude was We, we, yeah. we, we, we were getting, you know, the stuff for Waynesville, but we were stockpiling it here because we oh, were working man. on that shop. And finally, I think it was the FedEx guy. Yeah. One day he said, man, what are y'all doing? Opening another shop? And we were like, as a matter of fact, you're the <laughs> yeah, first one to know probably. Yeah. Yes, we are. Yes, yeah. you, we were. <laughs> it, it was. But, but, but with that being said, you know, getting in those products and, and stuff to making sure that all of our three retail locations are ready to sh- serve you folks. And That's right. Um, you know, it's be, tough this year, man. The pandemic is making it tough to get stuff. It's but. tough, but do you think it's easier than last year? No. I mean, in some ways, some ways. I mean, some, certain products is is still tough. I think some things is harder. Yeah. I think we've seen because there's more people. I think doing the boot it. and waiters are going to be tough this fall. What about leaders tip it? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, we got it. You need to buy it. Folks. Hey, all we know today is that Fish Pond had a container show up. That's it. We heard that Fish Pond had a container show. Thank up. you, Raz. That's right. For that so we've got some amazing things coming from Fish Pond. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, that so we're on in the container. It's like surprises to Fish. Just like the airlocks, they're in the container. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's it. Bobby made a great point. If we would quit building all these tiny homes with the containers, we might get more stuff. We might ha- not perfect. have a container. Shortage. I mean, yeah. I don't think every redneck in the southeast has bought a container <laughs> for his for his bunker, <laughs> and now we have a container shortage because we've been selling them for the last twenty years to everybody. Airbnb is next. You're going to see Airbnb. We've got a container shortage. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's perfect. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have looked at them because I'm like, man, this would be a good storage shed. I mean, how much are one of those shipping You can buy them down there. On They're like $3,000. Uh, like 85 on yeah. one in Greenville. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Down there. Yep. So, oh, my yeah. gosh, man. Anyways. Oh, uh, things how, we never how, thought of. How much trash do you need to handle for those things? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so how much trash do you have in your backyard for that thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was wanting to like, I was wanting to make mine nice. I was gonna make it more like a workshop. He saw a rattlesnake under his deck. He don't want. He's Did doing you? nothing under his yeah. deck. Uh, okay, I didn't see a rattlesnake under there. Oh, just a copperhead. Oh, we have had a copperhead up there. Yeah, we got a we got a resident black snake that hangs around. Oh, he's oh, cool, that's good. man. That's good to see. That probably keeps copperheads away. Any possums? Oh yeah, tons of them. They're awesome. Possums, kill possums, raccoons, all of them. Don't kill the possums. They're all around. It's your tip of the day. Well, well, cool guys. That was a good fun. show, man. Santee, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. Salute. Salute. There it is. Cheers. 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 Perfect. All right. Take us out, Shannon. Okay, I'm going to go okay, answer boys. that phone. Let's go get the phone, Dale. That wraps up another exciting and informative episode of the TuckCast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasegee Fly Shop and Guide Service located at 3 Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina, and 530 West Main Street, Silver, North Carolina. Be sure to visit www.tuckflyshop.com for stream flow information, book a guided trip, or even shop for your favorite Tuckasegee Fly Shop gear. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop. If you have a question or comment, Feel free to send those to info at tuckflyshop.com or give us a call 1-828-488-3333. For Coach Dell Diesel Collins, Bobby the Bearded Wonder Bennett, I'm Shannon Big Mess Messer. We'll catch you next week. Be sure to catch a few fish out there, won't you? Y'all take care. <laughs>